But so far, the star of these hearings has not been Kentangi Jackson. It's been a junior senator from New Jersey called Cory Booker. Now, like Kentangi Jackson, Cory Booker is also a world-famous legal scholar, hence his seat on the Judiciary Committee. Booker attended not only Stanford and Yale Law School, but then went all the way to Oxford University in England on the coveted Rhodes Scholarship. He has quite a resume. If academic credentials still had any connection to ability or achievement, Cory Booker would be a very impressive person. But in his case, we're going to have to grade on a curve because Cory Booker has come a long way. Cory Booker is from a world you have never been to. He's from a hard, unforgiving world of crime, decay, and raw urban authenticity. Cory Booker is from the streets of Newark. He once described his world in an interview, quote, I still remember my first month on the street, he said. I walked up to this charismatic black guy my age called T-Bone, who was one of the drug lords. I said, yo, man, what's up? And he leaped up in front of me, looked me right in the eye and said, who the blank do you think you are? If you ever so much as look at me again, I'm going to put a cap in your ass. Now, T-Bone, as you probably concluded, was one of Newark's most notorious drug lords. As Joe Biden might have said, he was a bad dude. But Cory Booker's a bad dude, too, in his own way. And the two became close. The Rhodes Scholar and the Crack Slinger, united by a common love of the street. But then, inevitably, tragedy struck. Cory Booker learned that T-Bone was on the lam from the law. By this point, Cory Booker was the mayor of Newark, so the friendship couldn't last. As Booker later recalled with sadness, quote, That rift between me and T-Bone was inches. We sat there, but I felt so alienated that there was a gulf as wide as the Grand Canyon between us. And I could not reach out to save this young man. And we drove back to a housing project called Brick Towers, and I've never seen him again since that day. <sighs> it's a poignant story. But Cory Booker isn't alone. No one has seen T-Bone since that day. In fact, no one has ever seen T-Bone at any point ever because T-Bone doesn't exist. As we later learned, T-Bone is a fictional character. Cory Booker made him up entirely. But Cory Booker didn't stop there. He also invented his own identity. It turns out that Cory Booker is not a product of the streets of Newark, not even close. He is, in fact, a blue-eyed rich kid from an all-white suburb. His parents were IBM executives. Now, you can judge, but you have to concede that whatever else he is, Cory Booker is a remarkable actor. He is the Jussie Smollett of democratic politics. A fraud, yes, but a deeply committed one. A man who has honed his skills. And those skills have been on full display this week as Booker has emoted all over Kentonji Jackson. Now, Jackson is an oppressed member of the professional class, too. She went to Harvard and Harvard Law School. So the two of them have a lot in common. Watch their solidarity. Your family and you speak to service, service, service. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not letting anybody in the Senate steal my joy. <laughs> I told you this at the beginning. I, I have, I, I'm embarrassed. It happened earlier today. I just look at you and I, I start getting full of emotion. You didn't get here because of some dark money groups. You got here how every black woman in America who's gotten anywhere has done. By being <laughs> like Ginger Rogers said, I did everything Fred Astaire did, but backwards in heels. They're gonna accuse you of this and that. Heck, in honor of your person who shares your birthday, you might be called the communist. But don't worry, my sister, don't worry. God has got you. <laughs> Do we make that up? Do we create that in some No, That actually happened in the United States. It's service, service, service. That's what we call hard edge striving now. It's service. <laughs> but the best was at the end. Don't worry, my sister. Wait a second. They're related? Well, apparently they are, at least in some hard to define spiritual sense. They have definitely seen each other at Whole Foods or on the flight to Edgartown. For decades, these two pioneers have followed virtually identical paths. Both grew up in white collar families. Both went to multiple elite schools. Neither one has ever left the tiny world of credential mongering NPR listeners who run this country. Now it's been a struggle for both of them, but they've made it. At this point, they're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Cory Booker chokes up thinking about the journey. Watch. I was in the White House with my Democratic colleagues and I'm, again, I'm in my joy. I can't help it. <laughs> and, and, and the president's asking our advice, who should we nominate and whatever. And 
I look at Kamala and we have a knowing glance, which we've had for years when she and I used to sit on this end of this committee at times. And then I try to get out to the president what it means, what it means. And I want to tell you, when I look at you, this is why I get emotional. It's hard for me not to look at you and not see my mom, not to see my, my cousins, one of them who had to come here and sit behind you. She had to, be, she had to have your back. I see my ancestors and yours. Nobody's going to steal the joy of that woman in the street or the calls that I'm getting or the texts. Nobody's going to steal that joy. You have earned this spot. You are worthy. Today, you're my star. You are my harbinger of hope. <laughs> That's not Jesse Smollett. Did you see the footage from the sentencing? That's not Jesse Smollett. It's exactly Jesse Smollett. Now, you can say, oh, I'm offended by it. But you can also acknowledge that's art. The best part, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris share a knowing glance, as they have for years. It's the mutual recognition of the totally fraudulent. A faker knows a faker. Oh, you're pretending to be someone you're not? Me too. 